Hello, I'm Leslie from Chocolate Baroque and today I'm going to show you how we're going to do a simple journal card which you can then add to your journal or you can add to other pieces of your mixed media. We're going to be using a couple of range from the new stamps that we've launched and we're also going to be using some household items uh, to show you how to get some really, really quick, easy little pockets to go into your journal. So, to start with, we're going to start with a jelly plate today. Um, three by five inch, wonderful little size for you to have very, very portable, great if you do crafting on the go. You'll see from my um, plate, I've actually not cleaned it as properly. That's had paint on it. And it's really actually good because a build-up helps you that when you pull your next print, it will help you to take back what is already there. So it can add interest and act, 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 act as a little bit more depth to your actual project. Today I'm going to be using the Make Art Inks and the roller that we had in the craft along box and I've taken a pink peony which is a very pale shade but you can build up colour and a sunflower so to start with here we go so cover your brayer well roller and this is so handy because the size of this fits so neatly with the little jelly plate if you've not used a jelly plate before basically it helps you to use paints and inks to create backgrounds and you always pull a one-off print. You can never repeat it, so every one you do is always unique. Um, and then you can cut them up, you can stamp on them, you can die cut them, you can add them to canvases, mixed media. This is a great little thing. My suggestion, make a few backgrounds, have a day or an afternoon just doing different things with paints and inks and stamps and see what you get and then you build up this lovely little stash of backgrounds ready for later on. So that's the pink peony. So here we go. Just actually going to do half here. Now it's very, very pale. And I don't know if you're going to see it that well, but we'll just keep building up the colour. Okay. I think I maybe picked a very pale one here, but I didn't want the actual background to dominate. Okay. Always have some photocopy paper next to you and you can roll off the colour and these actually once you've rolled off a few different colours can make great backgrounds themselves so never throw them away. So now I'm going to take the sunshine, sunflower I should say and again just gently rolling up and down. Turn the plate round okay so you're always rolling that way across now that's a much stronger colour Light, light rolling. The one thing about your jelly plate is it's made from a specialist material so you never need to use anything on it that's harsh like metal or knives or anything that can cut into it because you will actually destroy the structure of the actual plate. Now I've put mine on an acrylic block. It does come with uh, an acetate style um, polymer cover which you can actually lift up uh, and use. That's the protection film sleeve. Um, I like to do it because I like to use it like a stamp because I want to see where I'm going. But a lot of people just take their paper straight to it and print. So I like to start that way and then turn it over. So here we go. And straight down. And take the colour. Okay, and then if you want to, for a little bit of extra, turn it over. You could use your brayer if you wish, or your roller, to just help you have dexterity problems just to help you actually take up and pick that colour up. I'm using a smooth card today, uh, which has a little bit of tooth on it, and if it's got a little bit of tooth on it, it does help pull the actual print and the plate. Okay, so don't forget to go up to your edges. And then we'll do the reveal. And hopefully, there you go. So you see, for all that was very, very pink, you can actually see now, and all the texture that's in the back of this, is from the paint that's still sitting there on the jelly plate. Okay, so you don't have to clean that, I'm just going to put that to one side, put my lids on, and I will just clean my brayer off now, but you see how on the paper you start building up colour, that would make a great background, stamping on, etc. Okay, so one of the stamps that are on, uh, we're having on our shows at the moment, is a background stamp. This one is called, um, on the tiles. It's a 
a fantastic background stamp and it, it's just really, really great for adding to your existing stamping. If you're helping create backgrounds, it works with any stamps. It's also great if you wanted to use it in your hand and just do bits here and there. Uh, it can be very pretty, it can be very distressed and grungy. It's entirely up to you. I'm going to cover my jelly plate with this and just give a bit more interest and a bit more depth. And I'm going to be using Peacock Feathers Distress Ink. Now, if you're unsure with a larger stamp, run lightly your ink pad over the top of it and then light tapping after that. And that will make sure that you pick up ink everywhere. Okay, so beauty of this is it's bigger than that. So it's going to fit over the top. And I'm just going to go straight down like so. Allow the ink to settle into your card or paper. Uh, a lot of people say, oh, I can't stamp, and that's because they've stamped, lifted off very quickly, the ink hasn't soaked in, and you get this patchy effect. Okay. So, should be all right now. And there you go. So, there is the pattern over the top. That's just a little bit, don't worry, that, that's just extra. I think, obviously, I've had something stuck to the ink pad. There you go. So you've now got into the background straight away. Now you've got that to the front, you've got the colour in the back. Right, I'm going to now stamp on that. And I'm going to take a couple of stamps from our latest release, which is called Make Your Mark. And this one is literally called Make Your Mark because it's all about marks. Uh, we have a crack in, uh, cracked, uh, like a crack in a wall there. There are some circles. There are some grungy tape. There's... Um, what else is there? There's some dots and also there is a bubble wrap background. Great for, again, adding interest. I'm also taking the small leaf from our Glorious, which is another stamp that's just been released. Um, and that has on two very large stampers, Fantasy Flower and a Seed Pod Head. But then we have what we call our worker stamps, which are the smaller ones that are so useful to be used, not only on the, with the current stamp, but with anything else you're working on too. So I've got the small leaf and I have got the crackle and I'm using watering can, which is a greyer uh, coloured ink pad. And sometimes black can be too harsh. I don't want black on here because it'll detract from the background. It'll be too harsh with that pale background. So I'm going to be using the watering can instead. And here we go. Uh, excuse me while I look for that's it. Okay, so I'm going to stamp this crack f crackle first. And then, so this is a lot paler. So lots of light tapping. And I'm going to position this a few times on the actual stamp itself. So, let's have a look. Where do I want to go first? Let's do that one first. Again, don't have to press too hard because it's quite a slim one and if you press too hard you actually splay the stamp which means you almost get that double ghosting effect. So just sit it on and allow it to sink in. There we go, look, there's the first one. Okay, and I'm going to put, I think, just two in this one. And that's it. I'll have the other one coming in. Now, the, when it's, it's a long stamp, I tend to turn my work on the horizontal. It's much easier to press a stamp horizontally than it is to try and do the full length vertically, vertically when I can speak, sorry. So let's look at that one and place that one about there. Again, not too heavy a press, but allow the ink to settle into the card. Okay, and there we go. So that's my basis now. Right, now I've got the little leaf. This was actually um, inspired by one of my design team who actually used a similar version of this with the new stamps. Um, and I'm going to now take, again, I'm going to be using, I'm going to be colouring this with watercolour pencils. So again, I don't want it to be too strong. So, again, using the watering can, light tapping. 
and I'm actually going to put my leaves onto here and this is actually going to hopefully if I get it lined up right uh, let's have a look uh, yeah let's try and do it there again allow the stink to soak there we go so now that actual um, con like concrete wall crack is now actually acting as a branch to secure my leaves I'll do another one up here so there we go and you've heard what I've said about threes the trilogy always works better if you place things in threes so there's the second one and we'll do a third one down here don't be afraid to turn your work it's much better to turn your work than trying to work yourself round and twist yourself round. So I'm going to turn my work round there and I'm going to have this one about there. Okay. And there we go, there's the last leaf. Okay, so that's done with those. Okay, now at the moment the background is shining through and I don't mind the background shining through but I want to make those um, leaves a little bit more... Um, prominent into the actual work because I want those to be the focal image. So I've got some of the Koino watercolour pencils which we had on the show I think when we did our one day special. Um, but any watercolour pencils are fine, uh, you just have whatever you have in your stash. So leaves aren't all one colour so I'm going to just take a selection of a couple of greens say and a bit of a darker green and yellow. Yellow is great for bringing out colour in leaves. Okay, so, probably another one. Okay, I've got my <laughs> glass of water, sorry, and my brush. But the thing with these is you actually colour where you want first. Now, with this, I don't, you don't need to be precise. Scribbling works well. Because it's a watercolour pencil, it will actually start to blend better once you've actually hit the water with it. So don't worry about... Oh, I've not done it correctly or it looks a bit scruffy. Scruffy is actually better because if you're trying to do leaves and things like that and you try to place the colour too, it looks a bit placed. So just literally do a mixture. I'm going to take another green now. Just add. Now you could do this in shades of reds and orange and make it autumn leaves. That would look cool. Um, Basically, it's your stamp, it's your design. If you want to do blue leaves, do blue leaves. The reason you've got the stamp there is so you can create the art that you want. Don't be afraid to think outside the box. Or to do something a bit different. Now this is darker, so I'm just going to do a bit of darker shading down the actual strand of the leaf. Now at the moment, you're probably, God, this looks dreadful. I'm hoping when I paint... Put, water on it, it stops looking awful. A little bit of yellow in here and there. Just gives it that variegated look. And I think we're about there for that. So at the moment I have to say I know that's not looking particularly attractive, although you can see there's more definition with the leaves. This is where the magic starts. Take a brush you don't want it soaking wet. Your back of your hand is your best friend because you can tell how much water's on there. If you use paper or a cloth or paper towel, it's absorbent, so it's going to take more of the water out. On the back of your hand, you can tell how wet it is. So here we go. And let's just start now then. Can you see now the colours are starting to fill in? Okay. And slightly dry is better than too wet because if it's too wet then you'll find that your watercolours will pool and, pu and possibly even pill on the card. This is our white stamping card I'm using here so I know that it will take a decent amount of water. I wouldn't flood it but it does take a good and you see how the colours are now blending. You can still see some of that background that was in there with the overlay and the on the tile stamp but I quite like that because again leaves do have their own patterns on 
And let's face it, leaves like snowflakes, there's no two alike. Okay, so there we go. There we go, that's the stamp stand. So that basically is it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim it up for a journal card. So I've got my little trimmer here. And go around the edges. And let's just start trimming it up. Doesn't matter if you're actually uh, slightly on over. But give it a nice clean edge. And if you have some white showing because of the, the because the actual jelly plate has got curved edges rather than square corners, don't worry, you've got some white in there. We're going to deal with that in a minute. So get rid of those. I have got a corner rounder. And I'm just going to... The one thing I haven't got here with me, so still a bit damp, is my heat gun. But I haven't added a lot of water, so it won't be too bad. And it's not on the edges. Okay, so there's my... Now I'm going to take an alcohol marker. This is a metallic alcohol marker because I want to give this an edge. And if I do it in the, any of the colours that we've used for the inks, it, it could be too pale and you wouldn't see it. Alternatively, it could be too strong and you want to draw your eye in and just add a bit of interest around the edge. You don't want to detract from all that lovely stamping and colouring you've done. So taking the right side, which is, which is the bullet nib or the um, chisel tip, whatever you've got, Place it firmly onto your copy paper. Hold your artwork still and just run straight down like so, round the corner. Turn your work straight down, round the corner, straight down, round, and the last one, and round. There, I'm just going to actually go catch that. So now, the right edge. Do put the tops on because they do out dry out very quickly. Let's turn that over and now you can see I have a nice edge. Now that's a metallic one so once it dries it will actually dry uh, to uh, like a red gold colour. This one is in particular and I do like that contrast around the edge. Right, basically that is your journal card done. If you've made a mess on the back or, or you've got inky fingers on the back use a piece of, of white paper, just attach it to the back and just trim round it, just so you have somewhere to write all those lovely thoughts and ideas that you've got that you want to put into your journal. So finally, I'm talking about the household item. I have here a Manila DL long envelope. These are brilliant apart from sending letters and we all don't like brown, brown envelopes coming through the door. But this is brilliant because you can actually use these for a variety of things. So you can actually chop it in in three. And if you do it in three stages, lick that and stick it down. Cut it into three roughly equal pieces. At the top and bottom you'll end up with a pocket. And in the middle you'll end up with like almost like a band that you can put round uh, a card. Or you can put into again into your journal. But you've got another beautiful surface to work on. I have done mine here, okay, so this is one bottom as you can see, there's the bottom part of the envelope. I've used my roller and my inks, I have rolled up a couple of colours, I've used some of my Make Your Mark stamps and obviously the words Make Your Mark, that becomes my little journaling envelope. I've also brought my own journal in here, that I've got a few different coloured backgrounds etc etc. Okay, this is the one I think will work best with that. And what I would do now is I put it like that. There's my, I'd stick my envelope down for insert there. Here's another card, exactly the same, but slightly different edges as you can see from before, different colours. And now once that's glued in, I now have my own little envelope slot for my journal cards. There we go. I hope you've enjoyed this today and I hope you'll join a lot of other people like myself who are going to come along and give you lots of tips and ideas to inspire you and help you to create. Thank you for watching.